Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am glad you're with us today. We're going to talk today about food safety. Now, I know that doesn't sound too, too wild and crazy and sexy, but this is really important because I've been in practice a long time. I've been in practice almost 38 years and patients come to us all the time with all sorts of health problems. And sometimes they'll have gas, bloating, acid reflux, diarrhea, confusion, headaches. And so we have to do what's called a differential diagnosis. And what that means is we got to try to figure out what it could be. It could be a tumor, it could be a stroke, it could be they have food poisoning. So when it comes to this, we may have to dig a little deeper and find out how they run their kitchens. Because some of the things you're doing in your kitchen can be making you sick. And you didn't realize you're doing it. It's very innocent. I know you're not doing it on purpose. But I'm going to give you some little tips on what to do for food prep. And then also uh, leftovers, things like that, how to manage those things, because you can get sick from what you eat, not just the food itself, but the food could be contaminated. So, you know, you shop, you store, you prepare, you serve your food, you think you're doing everything right, might not be. Lots of routine food handling habits can breed and spread bacteria, germs, viruses, and this can make you very sick. Now, a lot of the things we're going to talk about today have to do with meat and dairy products. If you've listened to the show before, you know I don't eat meat and dairy products. I've been vegan for 35 years now. So some of you aren't, and that's okay. I don't judge. I love everybody equally. But I want to make sure that you understand if you are doing these things, the most dangerous foods, not only for your health, but for your safety, uh, could be animal products. So another reason why you might want to consider cutting back or cutting out animal proteins. Uh, or animal fats too, any animal pro products, because they're just not good for you on so many different levels. They're bad for the environment. They're bad for you. They're expensive. They're bad for the animals, certainly. Animals aren't happy when they get slaughtered. So a lot of things, uh, a lot of benefits to going more plant-based. And what's really cool, I just saw an article, and I don't know if it was true, in the United Kingdom by 2030, Burger King wants to have half their menu plant-based in the United Kingdom. Uh, and we're seeing this shift, which is really exciting for me. We're seeing this shift on fast food places now having plant-based choices. Now, the plant-based choices may not always be the healthiest. Well, it'll be healthier than the meat. It's not healthy choices, but at least the awareness is there. The consciousness is there. And years ago, I remember thinking to myself that health is like a wave. And a wave is peaking. And I picture myself on a surfboard at the crest of the wave saying, okay, I'm going to lead this charge. And it's kind of fun that all these years later, it's coming to fruition. People like myself and others are leading this charge and more and more people are realizing that your health is a direct correlation to what you eat. And that's the easiest part of health that you can control. You can't control your genetics. You might not be able to control some of your environmental stresses that you're exposed to, but you can control what you eat. And you have 100% control over this. In fact, there are people like bulimia, for example. Many times it's a control issue. People don't feel like they have control of other parts of their lives, but they can control what they eat or don't eat. That's not a healthy control. I want you to have a healthy control over what you eat. Now, the number one thing that we all should be doing is making sure our house is clean. That's pretty simple. Listeria bacteria can linger on surfaces for up to six days, and they make a film that makes them hard to kill. It's called a biofilm. And certain uh, pathogens in the body create what's called a biofilm. A biofilm is they put this shield around themselves and your immune system can't recognize them. And so the immune system is kind of like floating by and they look down and they say, oh, I don't know what that, 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 that looks okay. And it floats on by when really it's this protective shield this pathogen has created. So you need to sanitize, not just clean your counters and your sinks. And it takes two steps. And my mother always taught me this, rest her soul. Clean the counter, clean the floor, clean the counter first, and then, you know, wipe it off, clean off the, 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 the particles, and then sanitize it or use a cleaner on it. So first, clean your counters and sinks with hot, soapy water, and that takes away the dirt and the spills and everything that's on there. Then you could use a sanitizer. Now, there are natural sanitizers you can buy. Uh, you can use vinegar. That's a pretty good sanitizer, actually, white vinegar and water. Uh, you can buy certain ones that are natural. I would say be careful not to use a lot of chemical cleaners, commercially chemical cleaners, because you're inhaling them, you're getting it on your hands if you're not wearing gloves, and it can get into your food. That's why even uh, dishwashers are using natural soap because they have these soaps that you know prevent 
uh, spots. Well, what are they doing? They're putting a chemical on the, the dish to prevent the water from sticking to it. Well, then you use it, you heat it, you eat off it, drink off it, and those chemicals can get into your body. So if you're going to live a really healthy lifestyle, it's not just about food. It's about keeping your nervous system healthy, your mind, who you hang out with, what you read, what you expose yourself to, and then your environment. My house has zero carpets. Everything is hardwood and tile. And I have a robot vacuum. I have two different ones. I have the Shark and I have the, the Roomba. And uh, I had the Roomba for years, big, bulky, heavy. And I was at a, an estate sale one day and I had a Shark for like crazy cheap, like $20 or something like that. And I grabbed it. Oh, I love my robot vacuums. Really is one of the greatest inventions in the world because you can put it on, leave, come home, floors are clean. It's that cool. I broke a glass the other day. And so I swept it up, but you know, there's little particles and stuff. So then I ran my, I think I ran the shark at that time and looked in the dustbin and sure enough, all little pieces of glass are in there. So those things are just amazing. And even if you have carpet, it's a great way to clean your carpets every single day. Now, if you've heard me talk in the past, I'm not a fan of carpets because they're just a breeding ground for viruses, germs, bacteria, mold, fungus. Uh, so I'm not a fan of carpets. But if you have them, I just love those robot vacuums. So I'll, I'll give any, I only know about the shark and the Roomba, but I'll give either one of them two thumbs up. The shark is quieter, actually, so it's kind of neat. Uh, but that's a great way to keep the house clean. But when you, and I have a steam mop. That's, I think it's a shark steam mop, actually, too. And so after I vacuum, I'll, I'll just put some water in there and steam my floors clean. And it's amazing. It keeps it clean. It sanitizes. Uh, it, it's healthy. Uh, it's easy. It's quick. It's inexpensive. So... Just some thoughts there for you if you want to start going down that road. But keeping your countertops clean is really important. And also, it prevents things like bugs, like cockroaches and, and uh, ants for coming around. Uh, because cockroaches can be very toxic because of their poop. When they poop, it dries up, it gets in the air, and that can be toxic to you. So not having food on your counters or out anywhere is really a good thing because cockroaches are sneaky. And they're probably in your house. They're in everybody's house, I think. Um, but you don't want to certainly feed that. So if you have dog food or cat food out, not a good idea. You know, feed your dog or cat, put the food away. Because cockroaches will sneak out in the middle of the night and they will feast on you. And if you see one, there's usually hundreds or maybe thousands living in your walls. So just a thought for you. Keep everything clean. The big trend now, and I like this trend, is reusable bags. And I know places like Sprouts, I think Whole Foods, they actually give you 10 cents back if you bring your own bags with you. I don't know if you knew that. So a little trick you can do too, um, way to save a little money, my friend Clark Howard will be proud of me here, is when you walk into Sprouts, uh, I don't go to Whole Foods that much, but in Sprouts, I know they have a little container outside where you could drop off your plastic bags. If you just grab some of the bags out of that container and recycle them, you get 10 cents a bag. You know, just bring it into the store, reuse them, take them home again. So I like the idea of reusable bags, but the problem is you got to clean them. And especially if you're doing meats, because if you have uncooked meat juice on uh, uh, poultry, meat, uh, red meat, whatever it is, uh, you touch it and it leaks in that bag. If you don't clean that out really good, you run the risk of salmonella and E. coli. So between shopping trips, toss your tote bags in a washer or dryer and wash them with your clothes. I bring my lunch to work every day. I almost, I would say 99% of the time I bring lunch. And it's usually tea and it's usually, I had some split pea soup the other day. And so whatever I have, I like to cook. So I have whatever I have. Now I put it in a little cloth bag. Now it doesn't leak and I certainly don't eat meat. So it's not a big deal. But every time I do laundry, I wash face masks. I wash my lunch bag. Um, I have rags in my car. So when I go to grocery store, I put it over the, the shopping cart. And then I just, you know, use the rag and then I just leave it in the car. And so I add all these things to my laundry. And I always do my laundry, most of it in hot water because hot water kills viruses, germs, and bacteria. Now, I know you're not supposed to. It wears out the cloth. It's worth it to me. I'm okay. Now, dress shirts and things like that I wash in cold, but underwear especially. Please wash your underwear in hot water. Viruses, germs, bacteria, who knows what's there. That's important. Does it wear out faster? Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. It's okay. And I always wash my pillowcases. Every time I do laundry, I wash my pillowcases. Now, one of my doctors that works with me, uh, she changes her pillowcase every day. I never knew that. And then it was a, a gal I used to date, and she washed her pillowcases every day. And I had never seen that before. 
I don't wash them every day, but I, I do laundry often, so I, I do that. So um, again, that's not a food safety thing, but that's just a general safety thing. And try to use hot water for those things as well. You want to try to cut out your plastic. Before you place raw meat, poultry, fish, whatever, in your to-go bag, wrap it in disposable plastic bags, uh, like from the store or something like that. That's going to help catch some of the juices that run out. And it's funny because I remember I used to eat meat 30 some odd years ago. And I cooked it and I liked it. And it's funny because my mother would te- you know, save the juices. You want to meet that juice, you slice it open, the juice runs out. Well, what is the juice? Blood and uric acid. Uric acid is in that fluid, that juice that comes out. Uric acid is essentially urine. So it's blood and urine running out of your steak or out of your chicken. And you say, ooh, that's the juices. I'm going to dip that up and eat bread with it. Mm-hmm, it's so good. Yum, yum, yum. That's disgusting. So the juices is really just blood and waste products from the animal. So I wouldn't recommend you get excited about the juices, like au jus gravy, which is meat, blood, and urine. Um, I wouldn't get excited about that because it really is disgusting. But I digress. Um, So if you are using meats or dairy products, please be very careful with it. Um, I know there's been a debate. Do you wash the chicken before you cook it or not? My point is I don't care. (laughs) I don't eat chicken. It's very easy. Uh, if you have food laying in your refrigerator, you want to, you know, f- use it quickly. You know, first in, first out. If you're buying food, you know, like in a grocery store, you should put the older stuff up front and then use that first. If it's going to be a while, freeze it. Many times I'll make a big pot of soup. I'll make a marinara sauce. And if it's too much for me, I then freeze it. It's very simple. And then once I used up that, I'll just take the stuff out of the freezer and just continue using it until it's all gone. Um, but your freezer really is a good, safe place. Now, I don't want you to freeze food in plastic because as the food expands, it will scratch the plastic and little bits of plastic can get into your food. And those little bits of plastic are called endocrine disruptors. They mess with your hormones. So I don't recommend you freeze in plastic. Now, Freezing in glass is the ultimate. And so I save jars. Whenever I have a big jar of something, I have big jars, little jars, all sorts of different size jars. And every now and then I have to purge my pantry. It's like, okay, I've gone a little too far now. I got to get rid of some. But you know, if you're going to freeze soups, marinara sauces, anything, I do recommend it's frozen in glass and not plastic. Uh, you run the risk of maybe dropping it and breaking it. Well, you know what? That's a small price to pay if you're going to prevent your hormones from being messed up. But just don't drop it. It's really simple stuff there. Uh, make sure your refrigerator is cold enough because whether it's meat or tofu or whatever it is, you have to make sure that it's, it's at a good temperature, a cold temperature, because if things start to get heated up, that's when you have problems. So you, you want your uh, bacteria grows fastest between, you know, 40 degrees and 140 degrees. Uh, so you want to keep it below 40 if you can. If the thermostat doesn't read below 40, Turn the temperature around. Meanwhile, your freezer should stay right around zero. Those, that's Fahrenheit. Now, if you're not sure, buy an outside thermometer because your refrigerator might be broken and it's not giving you the right reading. So buy an outside thermometer, put it in the middle of the refrigerator, middle of the freezer, leave it for about five or six hours, see what happens. So it's not just what you eat, it's how you eat and how you prepare your food. And that's just, this is important because... You might cook food, leave it out on the counter. And I know over the holidays, this was an issue. I had a few patients come in and they had food poisoning and probably because they went to a party and the food was left out for a long, long time and they ate it or people were touching it and then touching, you know, something else and it spread that way. So I'm not a big fan of things like buffets, uh, salad bars. I miss my salad bars. There was uh, sweet tomatoes in the Atlanta area and I just loved sweet tomatoes. It was like the best place in the world to go for dinner because everybody could eat something there. And then they went out of business, unfortunately, with COVID. So, But just be careful if people are breathing on food and spitting on food and talking over it. Well, that's a way to spread cooties too. Now, here's the thing with viruses, germs, and bacteria. They will attack everybody, but they love a weak host. So if your immune system is weak, if you're tired all the time, if you uh, have an autoimmune disease, maybe it's genetic predisposition, you're more likely to get sick. A stronger person, a stronger host is less likely to get sick. So the goal here, even as I teach you everything, is I want you to try to keep your body as healthy as possible. So you're less likely to run the risk 
of having a problem. If you are exposed to listeria, you are exposed to bacteria, salmonella, whatever it is, we're all exposed to it. Why do some people get sick? Some don't. Two things. Number one, load. The more there is of this pathogen, the more likely you are to get sick. And then number two is your specific immune system. So I'm going to do a show next couple of weeks, actually, on just tips on the immune system. Just boom, 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 boom. I got like, I put together like 20 or 30 different tips. I'll just rapid fire that. But before then, you can go to our website, drjoe.com, listen to the show we did on immunity. Just type in immunity in the search bar and you'll, you'll bring it up, listen to it. But the three things you have to have to keep your body healthy, not saying you're going to avoid all diseases, but to keep your body healthy, the best chance, normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, good nutrition. All three things you have control over. Nutrition is an easy one. If you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com, type in, so what can I eat? And in fact, uh, I was just talking to Joe today, uh, the man in charge of, of making me look good. And so what can I eat? It starts about a minute or so in. So if you click on it, let it run. Joe's going to try to edit that for me to bring it up a little bit. But it'll tell you what to eat. Breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks. It's really easy. Listen to the show on immunity. Look, listen to the show on um, what to eat. So food is easy because you have to eat anyway. You might as well eat good food. The nervous system, that's where our team of chiropractors and health experts come in. If you have a pinched nerve, that can cause problems. If you have a pinched nerve to your liver, your spleen, your, your thyroid, your thymus gland, these are all immune organs that are controlled by the nervous system. So how do you know you have a pinched nerve? Well, the most obvious thing, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica, muscle weakness, that's easy. You know about that. But here's the thing. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You can have a pinched nerve and not know it. So for example, you don't feel your immune system. It's controlled by nerves. You don't feel your thymus, your spleen, your lymph glands, controlled by nerves. So my doctors are trained not only to test the nerves that feel pain, but they're also trained to test the nerves that don't feel pain. And the reason is if we take you on as a patient, we don't want to get you out of pain. We want to get you well. Then supplement-wise, minimum supplements would be Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. I take a scoop of each. I mix them together every morning. I add five drops of Dr. Joe's vitamin D. It's a liquid. And I drink that first thing in the morning. Instead of some people have coffee, I have Super Greens Essential Source and vitamin D. Glutathione is vital for the immune system. Probiotics, vital for the immune system. And so that's my protocol for immunity. Super Greens Essential Source, vitamin D, probiotics, and glutathione. I take that every day as part of my protocol. I take more than that, but that's part of my protocol. But if you're healthy, you're less likely to have a lot of these things get you. And if they do get you, it's going to be less. So if you'd like to make an appointment, come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. We uh, can get you an appointment usually within 24 to 48 hours. And we accept almost every insurance out there, Medicare, VA. If the VA refers you, by the way, VA folks, if the VA refers you, they even pay for your care, 100%. Why wouldn't you be here? Car accidents. If you're ever in a car accident, you need to come see us immediately. Don't let the insurance company jerk you around by saying, well, you didn't go to the doctor within 24 hours. We're not going to pay you. Get to see us as quickly as you can. We have ways of wording things to hopefully circumvent issues that may come up, but they will do everything they can to not pay you. Their job is not pay you. Their job is to pay you. It's to not pay you. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com, you can book it right online or call us. We were doing $2.99 for the first visit. I just spoke to one of my doctors today. We're going to extend that. So if you want to make an appointment, exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation, that alone is $150, $299. And then we'll put together a treatment plan. We don't know what it's going to cost after that because we don't know what you need. But we accept almost every insurance. We have payment plans available. It's the most effective, least expensive treatment you'll ever do for your health care is chiropractic. So you can do that. You can order supplements right on the website. Come by the office and pick them up. Save some shipping. We'll do everything we can to try to get you well and keep you well within reason, of course. So drjoe.com, stop suffering needlessly. Just book your appointment now. Other things you might be doing. Now, even as if you're a vegan, raw foodist, you want to make sure you wash your produce. Even things like melons and, and cucumbers, because people touch it, viruses, germs, bacteria in the air. Wash it with soap and water. You can even use a sponge. I use a sponge. And I scrub the outside of my fruits and vegetables before I slice into them. 
Because if there's toxins on the outside and you slice into it, you just drive it right into the, the food. So even if you're eating raw food, it's really important to wash the outside. And you could use good dish soap. It's going to wash off. It doesn't matter. And if you use a natural dish soap, healthier dish soap, even if you eat a little bit, it's not going to get you sick. Don't eat it. I don't recommend you eat it. But I use a, a scrubby, <coughs> excuse me, and I scrub everything down, like melons and cantaloupes, things like that, watermelons. But make sure you wash the outside of everything. If you're going to eat the skin on anything, I recommend you do organic. Apples, potatoes, carrots. Yes, eat the skin, but make sure it's organic. And it's funny with an apple. If you've ever done this, it's kind of cool. Get a, a pot of, like a cup of boiling water, a bowl of boiling water, and dip your apple, commercial apple, in the water. And let it sit there for a second. You'll see all the wax rise to the top. Same thing with cucumbers. Don't eat that wax. And if you're going to eat non-organic, you really should scrub the wax off or heat it off. So really kind of important. So these are just little tips that you can do every day to try to keep yourself as healthy as possible. Make sure you wash your hands. Mom was right. Wash your hands, you know, 20 seconds. You know the rule, happy birthday twice. Wash in between the nails, wash in between the fingers. Uh, get the hands clean. Because one of the dirtiest things that you can touch in the world is money. Money is just disgusting. Who knows what people do with that stuff or where it was put. So whenever I touch money, I always have this phobia. I always wash my hands really well. And if you just came home from shopping and you paid and you come home and you unload your groceries, you're spreading all those cooties everywhere. So make sure you wash your hands really well. Uh, make sure you wash your plates. Run your dishwasher. I'm a huge fan of dishwashers because they're hot and they can kill a lot of viruses, germs, and bacteria. And in the big scheme of things, it saves, even saves water. Because by the time you run water and wash your dishes and dry your, you know, rinse off your dishes and dry them out, just throw everything in the dishwasher, run the dishwasher. Make sure you're using natural dishwasher soaps. And they have them everywhere. I know Sprouts has them, Kro uh, Kroger, Publix, Home Depot, uh, not Home Depot, uh, Whole Foods. They all have these natural dish soaps. I strongly advise you use natural dish soaps, natural clothes soaps, natural body soaps. I use Castile soap on my body. Castile soap is a liquid. It's in every bathroom in my house, every the kitchen. I use it to shower. I use it to wash my hands. It's a natural soap. It, it, it's a, and once you start using Castile soap, it rinses off so easily. If I'm stuck somewhere, if I'm at a hotel or traveling and I forgot my soap, I use the commercial soap. It's so slimy. It's really weird. Now, you don't know that because you always use the commercial soap, but I strongly advise uh, you don't do that. And with leftovers, of course, make sure that if you get them from a restaurant, take them home right away. I would take it out of the styrofoam container because styrofoam is a plastic that can have uh, affect your hormones. It's, a, it's an endocrine disruptor. So I take it out right away. I try not to ever put hot foods in anything plastic or styrofoam uh, and then put it in glass. I've got glass containers. I've got glass to go, you know, carrying boxes and storing things. So that's really the best thing to do. I'm almost out of time. If you have any healthcare questions, send them to me through our website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. Uh, a little bot pops up. Send me a question. Put in your email address. We'll get back to you. If you want to make an appointment, please do. Stop suffering needlessly. Drjoe.com. We want to be your doctors. We can't guarantee we can ever fix everybody, but we got a really good track record. So drjoe.com. We're happy to set you up an appointment. We accept almost every insurance, Medicare, uh, 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 I can't think, and better. Uh, so many insurances that we take, uh, we'd love to do be your doctors and help you, even if you don't have insurance. If you have a crazy deductible like so many people have, chiropractic is the most, afford, most effective, least expensive treatment for pain, for back pain in most cases. So make the appointment, send me any questions. Uh, follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. We post almost every day, a lot of good stuff. It's absolutely free, at Dr. Joe Esposito. Hey, folks, tell your friends about the show. Again, the website, drjoe.com. We'll be right back.